uh, yes, we have. It's uh, uh, maybe we'll show you in the presentation itself. So. Oh, okay. Okay. I so. think you skip you skip and skip a bit so that I can comment. Uh, so maybe you guys can if not like yesterday suddenly you get caught. I I didn't manage to like go through the question thoroughly with you. Mm, mm, okay. Mm. So do you guys, do, do we uh, do we present or do we fast? I'm uh, sorry. So, do we present from the beginning or just go through like quickly? I think you pick pick and choose the point. Ah, uh, all right. And if I stay, stay, then you stay. Okay. Because okay, I want to okay. read a bit. Okay. Then Chang, you choose lah. Okay. So case study was BK Airlines. Um, our CEO da 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 da. Next slide. This is our executive summary. We'll talk about problem statement, two policy changes. Okay, wait. For for go back. Yes. Okay. CEO, you present the role. What are the, each of their roles and how will they deal with all these things? So it's a so COO for, or the CEO? Okay, so, so for example, like Zul Amin is not here. So he is the chief financial. So uh, uh, as a CEO, I will, take, uh, I will take his task in explaining, you know, to mm. make up the teammate members. I think in that way, uh, you are showing professionalism. Okay. Okay, okay. next. Go on. Executive summary, our problem statement. Uh, we'll follow by two policy changes and two, um, two internal changes. And then we'll follow by question and answers. So problem statement. We will introduce a very brief summary of events. So about AINA, the, about collective agreement, what happened, what was the effects, and therefore, what will the airlines do? This will be followed by the problem statement itself. Okay. Good. Okay. So after the problem statement, um, Amira will talk about the first policy change, the EDI committee. We've made the slide so it's more easier to see the three people, uh, the three teams that will be involved. Uh, she will also mention about CEDAW um, when she's talking about external consultant. Then the responsibilities of the EDI committee are below. Okay. Uh, I think another external consultant would be the human resource. Ministry, Ministry of Human. yeah. Okay. You also include them so that uh you can get the latest SOP from other companies. So uh what what you are saying is, is that um uh, maybe it's not that you're not capable of making this yourself, but you are saying that after this there will be no more discrimination and we want to make it like uh we are following the rules and regulation that is permitted by the law, and there is no. A uh, higher committee, uh, aside from the governmental level, I think mm. you would like you no know, one is an NGO, uh, which is uh UN in a way. So basically, uh, you are following the standards of local and global. Mm. Okay. So it makes sense to include them as your external consultants. Okay, sure. So HR ministry from the government is it? Human resource government. So executive, who is the executive? Uh, hmm. I think most likely the HR, the uh, the HR and several of the teams inside. Okay. Hmm. Some people do not trust the HR. So hmm. What? You... Oh, sir, are you still there? Some people do not trust HR. So huh. what do you do? Um, that's why we have we also have an equal amount of employees to be at the site and also external consultants to oversee. So the executives they won't, how do you say, over number. We'll have an equal number of employees and external consultants to referee it and make sure that there are no, um, how do you say, unfairness going on in the committee itself. Would that be sufficient? I think adding uh, other departments mm. would also like. Uh, uh, make that executive part is more uh, conclusive because you know if only one person is in power so uh, then you know abuse of power and sometimes it's more favorable like you know like people with 
good looks are getting better treatment than you know people with ordinary looks it can be some problems along that way yeah so i think including more people in this executive you cannot only see hr mm. so because if everyone is from hr like three people from hr they can just conspire against you you know yeah we, we want more transparency we want more fairness so in adding more people towards the adding the more department to the executive you are taking this thing actually seriously okay yeah so i, I don't know yet who who those two are going to be but maybe like maybe you can appoint a, a counselor or some you know some people to be a part of it okay okay who are the employees uh employees representatives from the uh just from the dip, different departments including the uh for the current team uh the stewardess in grade B. I think you can do the rotational basis for employees. You know, like if there are 10 teams, for example, mm. uh, a representative from each team, and it may not be the manager because from the previous uh, thing is that the manager dismissed them completely. So your, their voices are not great. I think representative from each. So you need to uh, define and justify how many uh, working groups that you have or maybe like you can go by region since it's uh, uh, international airline maybe you can go by asia africa uh, the west the us you know yeah so that if not there are, there will be too many people within that committee yes okay so employees rotational representative of each teams uh, not the managers either region or working groups Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Next. Okay. Uh, next, we'll talk about the open and transparent policy. So the first one is just encouraging the transparency with family plan so they can plan ahead of time. Um, we do this so we can arrange job rotation with the you know, employees or with other employees in the future to prevent employee shortage. But if there really are, uh, and we are hoping there won't be, we can employ contract workers from other airlines for the period to cover the shortage. Okay, how actually you tell them to plan their family plan? I think mostly it's just, uh, just informed, but we also advise like the reason why we advise not to have, uh, we advise, uh, how do you say, no pregnancy in grade B is because of the safety. But if they inform us, ahead of time um say if they yeah as, as soon as possible as soon as then we can make we make plans already we can plan for that that'd be okay what if suddenly like this person have been pregnant for seven times does not actually affect the work or other workers because you can only advise mm. or you can you know, these are some of the things that you may encounter okay how are you going to deal with it? Sorry, what do you say? Some some person is pregnant seven times. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. For example, January once, then October once, then the next nine months they get pregnant again. What are you? How are you going to deal with it? Because basically, uh, sex is a part of life. Mm. And even like people who are not married are having sex nowadays. So mm. how are you going to deal with it? Probably we'll introduce family planning or sexual education properly because realistically also the employees, they can only take a certain amount of leave that is permitted. If, they, um, if it's over that, then we, uh, it's very hard for us to keep them as employees if, they, if this would be an infinite break. I think uh, how you advise is you need to give a time time mm. period. I think for every three years, you can conceive one child. I think mm. that's more practical. And why three years? You need to justify why three years. Because if not, for every two years, mm. this person will be on leave. I think three years is like kind of, how should I say, acceptable. acceptable. Yeah. So... So basically, you need to give a time frame on what is allowed and what is not allowed. Okay. So 
I think like if you give a policy where every three years you can conceive a child, uh, and we also advise on family planning. So in that way, you are protecting your interests and you're protecting your employees' interests. This is because of the, the comment I made yesterday that you only favor more the women uh, and the employees. Hmm. You are operating as a business. You need to know that. Okay. Okay. Got it. I mean, I also got it. I'm also writing it down. <laughs> um, hmm. Okay. Then our second one is just a safe space anonymous online form. So you can, complaints can be sent to the EDI committee. And also the new employment contract, they accommodate both male and female employees. So parental leave guidelines. So basically all? Uh, sorry? The new contract will be all? All, yeah, all. Okay, then you, uh, even if you didn't write it down, you just need to explain that it's compulsory for uh, them to sign a new contract. So that, there will be no discrimination mm -hmm. and everyone is entitled to the same uh, policy. So okay. you, uh, when, they, when you say that you are entitled, meaning that you're not discriminating them, everyone is getting the same treatment. There will be no more grade B, grade A, you know? Because if not, uh, as previously from the question and from our discussion yesterday, like only grade B will sign it. That's also uh, because I followed your slide. There are the things that I didn't see. I wasn't able to see yesterday. Thank okay. you. All right. Okay. Got it. Uh, should, we, should we go on to the next one or? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Next. Sorry. Yeah. Okay. Then we move on to the composition and rehiring. So same as yesterday, it's if they want to return, we test if they're eligible. If they are eligible, they'll be rehired, compensation plan B. If not... But, but if they are rehired, why do you need compensation? Uh, it's also due to the lost time before. So the lost the time lost before... Time before who, whose time is actually lost? So uh, we base it on the amount of time they have left in their contract before they were terminated prematurely. So I have to take into account that. So they, they have lost like their contract hours at the time. And also we put them through like stress, la, stress and distress. I would say that if you guys pay the same amount, it wouldn't like, uh, it wouldn't affect their work, you know? Mm. So uh, I don't know. I don't know whether it's true or not. But from my view is that if you are going to be rehired, and basically, you're just going to dispose this discriminatory practice. It doesn't really affect them uh, financially, you know? Mm. Basically, uh, if people do not want to be rehired, then it makes sense to give them a VSS or a retrenchment. But if they're mm. going to be hired back again with just a new contract, with the same amount of pay, I did. I wouldn't think that they need a compensation plan. Okay. Uh, will... I don't know whether it makes sense to you guys, but mm. I, I don't know. You guys can proceed with it if you want. Okay. Well, I think we'll, we'll discuss a bit about that as well. Yeah, as long as you are able to justify, it's okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then this is just talking a bit about the, the different uh, plan A, plan B, returning, non-returning. And we also justify it based on how we can afford based on our financial standing, 2018 and 19 are strong. And we also return return of investment. So reduce I think, training. I think plan A, maybe mm -hmm. like you, you make a compensation in a way, but uh, it's also uh, another way to word it is that if they are not going to be rehired, then they can just complete their tenure. For example, maybe that your contract is on a one-year, one-year basis. So you just allow them to terminate the contract by the end or by the fulfillment of the contract. But uh, uh, isn't plan A for those who were already terminated? So, I, mm, so these are just for the for the employees so who you want to have terminate the under, contract, is it? Yeah, kind of revive the contract, like. Okay, yeah. I understand. Mm. 
Uh, but another way to look at uh, uh, things is which is, you know, people are signing new contracts. But since they do not want to sign the new contract, you just let them tell me uh, uh, the contract comes to an end. For example, they will work only until July. So now it's June. So you just let them work for another one month. You get what I mean? Yeah. So in that sense, it, uh, you do not need to compensate them. You just allow them to terminate the contract by time, by replacement of the contract. Mm. But um, I think there's a bit of confusion because this reimbursement and compensation is for those like Aina who were terminated before due to this policy. It's just we like to address it, but also address the people who were affected by this before. So, so they, are, they were already terminated. Okay. Then there will be another question which is coming. So what happens to all the previous one which have been terminated due to pregnancy? Yeah. How so, are you going to deal with that question? So for example, it is, if they have been terminated five years back, does this law still apply to them? Yes, I think this is the so reason why. You are going why. to find them. Mm. Huh? Mm. You are going to find them. Okay. Please. I think it would make sense to see that in that case, she will be compensated if she do not uh, want to come forward. I mm. think that makes more sense. Because if you say like that, then the people who have been terminated, because we know that Aina is not, uh, we assume that Aina is not uh, an isolated case. Mm. So what you're saying is, if you do, if you do it like that, then uh, you are saying that people five years back can also be entitled to plan A. Which they may have already like worked somewhere or maybe gone to other industry. Okay. Yep. Uh, this is some food for thoughts. I don't know whether it's applicable or not. Thanks. No, uh, I just want to recap really quick. You mentioned that do you only compensate if they're not coming back to work? Um... I think you allow them to terminate the contract. Okay. And for Aina case, if she do not want uh, still to work with us, she will be compensated for this. I think you put it like that. The amount you did not, you need not disclose it. Okay. Because if not, like it will set a precedent, but in case the panels ask, maybe put like three months salary or six months salary. Okay. You know, so you need to have this at the back of your hand. Just in case they ask this question, because I don't even know what question are going to be asked. Mm. So we don't address the employees that were um, that were terminated before due to this policy. Uh, you can, but you need to, you know, like from, from your question, I can from your from your statement earlier, I can, you know, there are certain things that arise when you mm. word it like that. Okay. Maybe you can word it in another way if you still want to implement this policy. Okay. Thanks. Okay, that's. Shall we, shall we quickly move on to the next one? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Next one is uh, just very quickly on Aina. If she wants to continue, we'll give her compensation plan B. If not, compensation plan A, HR okay. will work. Yeah. Is that okay? Next. Next. So manager briefing and team check-in. So oh, the manager... Sorry, sorry. I think... Uh, just prepare that each of you have a slide and if possible, you can just send your slide to the panel. So in case something got stuck along the way, so they can refer back in case they want to. Okay. Okay. So yeah, the manager involved and also the three steps that HR will take moving forward. So there will be SOPs for managers to send complaint internally before actions are taken. We will review their act of conduct so to make sure they are professional even outside um, work environment. And they will be brief on updated policies that we will introduce um, after the EDI committee. Okay. okay. What else should you be briefing a manager? Uh, maybe just the situation in general, just to um, tell them that for the, uh, for the familiar employees, especially the stewardesses, it's a very stressful time. So uh, use like tact and uh, just be mindful 
uh, and heal them out, probably. I think in this situation, it's more important that you say that these kinds of things will not happen again. So all managers will be briefed, especially on this. Hmm. So that uh, no discrimination against female employees after this. I think that's how you brief the manager. Okay. So we'll brief them on this situation. Yeah. Like, because you say that manager briefing, what are you briefing him about? Hmm. New, only the new policy? What about the, the consideration that also comes with it? So to conclude all of that in one sentence, you would you just say that this situation will not happen again. So uh, no discrimination against female employees. So you are wording up manager uh, for the consideration and the policy. Okay. Next. Okay, so we'll just show a timeline. Uh, HR brief managers, EDR committee will work. Then managers will check in and uh, with the proposed policy changes to get their feedback. Feedback sent to EDI committee. After that, we'll introduce. After introducing, uh, we will review the changes, uh, review like the effectiveness and if necessary, we'll change. So how long is the team is going to be assembled? Oh, we were thinking like probably step one to step four. Um, it's very hard for me to give a date, but let's say four months. And let's say step four to step five, the best, review. Best way to say that, okay. Uh, in four months, the policy will be uh, made anew by the committee. Mm. However, the committee will stay for a minimum of three years to see whether this policy uh, is effective or not. If if there uh, if there in inefficiencies, uh, this committee will work on it immediately. So you 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 are going to say that this committee is going to stay, meaning all the reviews they will get back. So there is someone looking on this matter. Okay. Uh, next. Uh, conclusion. Da, da, da. Oh, yeah. uh, uh, sorry. Three years is like uh, just my wording. Maybe you can make it five. I don't know how you're going to do this. That, that's an example. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next. next. So, conclusion. Uh, this is our mission. We will be backed by these three action policy change, rehiring, and manager briefing to create female employee oversight. That should be it. I think it's more important to say that no discrimination will be uh, no further discrimination will be tolerated. Okay. To say it will create a female and family friendly working environment is also saying that you can bring your kid to work. Mm -hmm. Maybe you had, but and then only like if you focus on the female so you are also saying that uh, male do not need to sign the uh, new contract. Yeah. We're thinking like family friendly because it's like we also take into account their family plans. Wait, sorry. I'll have to interrupt uh, that smile and take a screenshot if that's okay. Okay, Ding, let me check. Like yesterday. Shall I stop sharing? Yes, yes. Okay. All right. Uh, smile, <laughs> she... If you can open your cam, please open it. Uh, yeah, yeah. Cannot also, that's okay. fine. Okay. Good morning. Okay. Uh, three, two, three, two, one. One. Okay, thank you. Thanks, Zuhimi. Thank right. you so much, guys. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your help.